What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video and in today's video we're going to be doing another review roundup as I cover two new movies. One that is already available online for you to go ahead and rent and purchase that I was sent to screener by the one of the writers and producers of this film over on Instagram. They reached out to me and then the other one is a film that's actually coming out later this week as of filming this in two days. It's currently the 7th of December of 2022 and this movie will be dropping in select theaters as well as on VOD in just two days on the 9th of December. So let's get started with the movie that's coming out this week, Black Warrant. Directed by Tabor Takax and starring people like Cam Gigandet, Tom Berenger, Helen Harrow, and Hani El Naimi. This is a story about a DEA agent going after the cartel while an assassin is going after the same cartel members. So before we get too far into this review, I want to take a moment and say a big thank you to those over at Sabin Films for sending me over another early screener. The last movie I covered for them was a film called American Murderer from just a good few weeks ago at this point. It'd be a little bit over a month ago since I covered that. And that was a movie I actually really enjoyed and I talked about here on the channel. And they sent me another one a few months ago for a movie called The Aviary that I also gave a positive review for. So today I'm talking about a movie called Black Warrant. Like I mentioned, this movie will be hitting VOD as well as in select theaters on the 9th in two days as of filming this later this week and so depending on when you're watching this this movie may or may not already be out and so yeah going into this I had already known who the main star is after seeing him in plenty of movies but most recently just seeing him in the film Violent Night where he played a small comedic role in that film and overall I went into it thinking cool some sort of film that has to do with a DEA agent the Mexican cartel and all these different things that are going on so people are going to get killed there's going to be this crime through thriller element to it, I'm all in. But unfortunately, I was not a fan of this movie and cannot give it a recommendation. Again, I'm always grateful to check out any movie early and going into this, I went in with a positive mentality, but I was very disappointed while I was watching this film as I found it to just be generic in every sense of the word. The base premise here without getting into spoilers because I don't want to get too far into what happens here, even though I don't really think there's much of a mystery here. I'm just gonna kind of keep it vague because the trailers don't show that much. But the base premise here is that we focus on a character who is a DEA agent and he is working in Mexico and trying to take down various people who are part of the cartel. Not too long into the film, we're introduced to another man, an older gentleman who's chilling, retiring on a boat, just living his life, drinking some alcohol, fishing off the side of this boat and just living his life. And that's when he's visited by an old military friend or somebody who works in the government who pretty much reaches out to him and says, hey, I need you to leave retirement this is a you know national security situation and he gives them some targets that have a black warrant on their head and it turns out that this guy is actually an assassin or at least he used to be and so now he's getting called back into the game to take out these individuals and they just so happen to be the exact same individuals that our other DEA main character is actually going after so when some assassin starts to show up and starts killing these guys that he's investigating he starts to get a little bit curious their worlds collide and then there's a story that plays out there on top of that there's a forced romance in this film and i'll just keep it vague in terms of the narrative and there were some elements on paper about this film that i could totally see really working and some people seeing about this film thinking hey that could be pretty cool maybe hearing it and being like oh that's a pretty cool premise i could see how that would play out but this is a 110 percent a situation where the execution for me just did not land this movie for me was again like i mentioned earlier just generic in every sense of the word whether it was the editing whether it was just the overall camera work, the performances, it was just forgettable. There was really nothing about this film that gripped me in any way, shape, or form. There was nothing about the reveals of the story that kept me excited. There was something about the film that just felt stale and cold, almost like if you were eating popcorn that had been left out for three days with no butter and no salt and decided to say, mmm, scrumptious. It's just nothing about this film that really worked for me and i know that might be a little bit harsh to say but i just was not a fan i kept consistently looking at the runtime of the film to see how much longer i had in the movie and i just was never captivated or invested by the characters or the story being told here i think there are moments of action that i did find myself engaged in but outside of that it's it's really minimal when it comes to the positives that i have in this movie at times there are decent performances but i would say that they're sadly undercut a lot of times by the actor who was given the decent performance having to act off of somebody who honestly wasn't giving a good performance the love interest in this film played by helen harrow for me 
Yeah, I really didn't like her performance in this film and her chemistry with Cam Gigandet just did not work. And having them go back and forth, there was times he was giving a decent performance over the course of the film and it just felt like he was playing off of somebody he had zero chemistry with, which just took away any of the energy from these scenes. And one thing I definitely have to say about Cam Gigandet when it comes to his performance here is that he has to speak Spanish over the course of the film because he is obviously working out of Mexico. And I'm totally okay with having a lead character that's doing this kind of thing where they're a DEA agent or some sort of military personnel who has to go now and, and you know work in some foreign country. And maybe they have some sort of a just base American accent when they're speaking the language of that place. But man, it just felt like this guy Cam was just given the lines, the Spanish lines right off of camera and came right on camera and would read them or have to do them in ADR later on. Listen, I'm not the greatest Spanish speaker in the world. I grew up in Miami. My family is half Cuban and half Puerto Rican. So I can speak Spanish and I can understand it fluently. But yeah, I was watching this and thinking, I can't understand sometimes what this guy Cam Gigandet was even saying. His Spanish was so, so bad at times, and he just sounded like the whitest dude in the world trying to speak Spanish. And it just didn't sell me on the character in the world because of the fact that if you're gonna be a DEA agent or even some sort of officer at all, or an agent or a military personnel that's working out of a foreign country that you have to you know, be able to speak that language fluently, it doesn't make sense that you'd be that poor in terms of your delivery of actually saying these words. There was times where I was just laughing out loud because of how bad the Spanish that he was speaking was and how it was even funnier that he was given lines of dialogue and sentences that he actually had to speak that only people who had some sort of fluidity in Spanish would have been able to say or know how to phrase, but because he was just given those lines offset and he actually didn't know how to pronounce those words properly or say those words, it just came off just so bland and stale. And, and that was part of my problem with this movie was a lot of times I felt like the actors were acting. and. This was definitely a case of that. And there's honestly not much more I can say about this movie without getting into spoilers and none of the marketing has leaned into that. And since the movie hasn't come out yet, I don't want to do that and spoil it for anybody who maybe is interested in seeing it. But I will say if you're thinking about seeing it, I cannot recommend this film as a movie you go and spend your hard earned money on going and seeing it in theaters, nor can I suggest going to see it on VOD. I think if this movie pops up maybe one day on something like Netflix or Hulu or Tubi, whatever the case may be, and you just kind of want to throw it on to see what it's all about, I guess it's a harmless watch in that kind of situation, but even then, just not worth it. And with that, let's move into the next movie that I actually enjoyed quite a bit more, and that is Boy in the Corner. Directed by Josh e. Lee, who wrote this film alongside Luciano Piero Diamato, who actually sent me this screener to check out the movie, this film stars people like Siren Vergara, Victoria Shepard, Sean Pelayo, and many more. First of all, a big thanks to Luciano for sending me over a copy of this movie to check out and cover here on the channel. This film is already available to purchase and rent online in places like Amazon Prime and anywhere else that you can rent these films online. And I believe coming in the next week or so, they're going to be dropping it on Blu-ray and some physical media in certain areas. I believe you can purchase that online. But again, a big thanks to Luciano and their team for sending me over an early copy of this movie. I saw some of my YouTube peers covering this film within the last few weeks, so I was I was very curious about it after hearing some of their thoughts. I had been reached out to before to check out the trailer and I did think it looked pretty interesting as this is a very different kind of film. It definitely has an artistic flair to it. It's black and white and it really hones in on one specific character and the aspect ratio is a little bit more old school. So I was really interested to see how this movie was gonna play out and what it was really truly gonna be all about. And without getting too deep into spoilers, this is a heavy hitting movie about an individual who is a young kid, a teenage guy who's growing up in this household with a single mother who's really struggling to make ends meet and she's kind of I guess ignorant to what her son is going kind of going through. She's distant from him while also being loving and she cares about her kids. She wants to be able to put food on their plate and she will sacrifice her ability to eat a meal in order for them to eat a meal but at the same time you know she's kind of 
lost in her own world and she's not necessarily fully involved in her kids' lives. And so that's why we have our main kid, Miles, the one that we're focusing on here, who just seems like a very misunderstood kid who's not necessarily got the greatest home life. He's living in poverty and he's just not really excited or happy about the way that he lives. And this ends up leading him into getting groomed by some gang members and finding him in a tough situation where he has to find a way out of that. In the mix, there are some people who try to help him. There are those who try not to help him. There are those who try to hurt him and those that just flat out ignore him. And so at its core, this is really a movie about the poor unfortunate souls, especially young men who grow up in, you know, very poor areas with maybe family members or parents who don't really give them a whole lot to kind of go off of that don't really listen to them a whole lot. Maybe they have a single mother that they don't really connect with, like in the case of here, and don't have a father figure in their lives and end up kind of being raised by the streets and the terrible people a lot of times that are on the streets. And so this movie definitely has a hard hitting message in the end. And what I'll say about this movie is this is a movie that really in the end of the day, I think worked for me as we came to the close of the film. This was a movie that over the course of the film, I found myself a little bored with at times. I did check the runtime from time to time because I was thinking, oh, this is dragging on a little bit, but I was enjoying for the most part, their performances. I was enjoying the tone of the film and I was enjoying the message of the film and the real life kind of situation that it's trying to shine a light on. And by the end of the film, I can genuinely say that I felt like it did bring it home but I can't see this being a movie that everybody's gonna love. This is a far more solemn, serious, kind of quiet film that doesn't have a whole lot of big events that are going on. In a lot of ways, it feels very realistic, like you can totally see a lot of situations in the world being just like this, but this isn't a film that's really based around quick pacing or events that are pushing forward a very strong narrative. This isn't really a movie that was strong on the narrative side of things. Unfortunately, this was a movie that I found to be more enjoyable in terms of its artistry and how unique the film is in terms of its look, its feel, its vibe, and the fact that it's kind of going for this lower budget indie kind of movie. And I enjoyed the performances. I think that's what kept me engaged. But yeah, this was a movie I did find slow throughout the course of the movie. I did find it to be a little bit dull and boring at times. I can't see myself really revisiting this film. So I do think that you gotta kinda take that into consideration with this review. Uh, I think this is a movie that I can say worked for me in the end, but if you're the kind of person who says, hey, I'm gonna give a movie 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, and if it doesn't impress me, I might turn it off. I can see some individuals with that kind of an attention span or that kind of care towards a movie turning this off kind of early because it's not really all that exciting or engaging to watch at times. With that said though, I do feel like the movie still worked and by the time it came to an end, I felt like the entire picture worked together to kind of create a very unique and enjoyable movie. And somebody like myself, who's a big film fan, I was able to take a lot from the movie, even if I can admit that on a narrative level, it's kind of bare bones in comparison to a lot of films that do tackle very similar subject matter in the modern day. But I do want to say again, a big thanks to Luciano and his team for sending me over a screener for this. I did enjoy it. I gave it a positive review uh, on Letterboxd. I gave it a, a three star. I think this is a solid movie that definitely knows what it is and then tells a solid message by the time you get to the end of the movie. Uh, I think that there's something to take away from here and there's a very realistic look at what a lot of people are going through. And I think if you're the kind of person who likes to see something different, indie and artistic, there is a lot of enjoyment to be had in this movie. As long as you know that this isn't gonna be something that's really about a strong script and narrative that has a lot of story progression and flow. This is far more about tone, feel, and overall vibes in terms of how it's telling its story. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna mispronounce this, so to avoid completely sounding terrible, I'm gonna look down at my notes here, but the composer, and Cass Rashvili, who actually recently worked on something like Devotion uh, that actually stars Jonathan Majors that just came out in theaters, is playing in theaters right now. Uh, they're the composer of this film and I think that the composition, the musical score of this film, without a doubt, is one of my favorite parts of this movie. I think that's what really set the tone for this movie. There was a lot about this movie that worked on a very emotional level because of the score of this film. And I really gotta praise Anne for the work that she put into this because any moments that I found myself emotionally captivated, nine times out of 10, not only had to do with the acting and the look and feel of the film, but specifically the music that really brought you in to the minds and the soul of this character, Miles, that we're following over the course of the film. 
So that's gonna be my thoughts on Black Warrant as well as Boy in the Corner. Boy in the Corner is definitely the one of the two to check out if you're interested, and Black Warrant is just not one that I think I'll ever revisit, and it isn't even a movie that I would tell you to throw on because it's so bad, it's good. It's just a movie that exists, and unfortunately it just hits every box in terms of being stale and generic, which is a shame with some of the recognizable faces in this movie that I have seen give a lot better performances and be in way better movies. But a big thanks to you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. It definitely helps the channel out. Consider subscribing to the channel because I'm not gonna stop talking about movies here on the channel. And if you like talking about movies, I'd love to have you join me down below in the comments, letting me know what you think about movies. And what do you think about these two movies? Boy in the Corner as well as Black Warren. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously, depending on where you're watching this, Black Warren is probably already out. And I definitely want to hear what a lot of people have to say about this. And if you enjoyed the movie and you're on the opposite side of me, I definitely would love to hear what you have to say about Black Warren. So anyway, the big thanks to you guys for watching. Hit that like button, comment your thoughts, subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.